those that made me were uncivil. They made me harder than the devil. Knives won't cut me, fire won't light me, dogs bark at me, but can't bite me. Tussa. Whitling Castle, England, September, A.D. 1153. Rhys ap Owain had three goals. The first was to depart English soil forever and return to his beloved homeland of Wales. The second was to lay waste to the English who continued to encroach onto those lands, especially the Fitzhughes, and thereby preserve Wales for the Welsh. The third, and most urgent, was to unhorse the huge knight charging him at a thunderous pace. He set his lance, aiming at the man's shield, a little left of centre. His destrier gathered momentum. The tournament crowd roared. Another second only. Brace. Twist. The shock of the collision was ferocious and almost unseated him, but he angled his body, and with a screech, the man's lance slid past across his shield. He felt the solid contact of his own lance, though. Hard, solid contact. A jarring thud. The other man's horse shied to the side. Then it was abruptly over. Clouds of dust obscured the outcome of the joust, but Reese knew the feel of victory. He knew the smell. He breathed deep of dust and sweat and horse flesh. Twenty-nine tournaments he'd competed in during the last three years, and he'd been unhorsed only four times, and not once during the past season. Even his war horse sensed their victory, for the big animal's pace changed to almost a prance. The earth trembled beneath his heavy hooves, while behind them, the other destrier came to a riderless halt. Rhys circled the demarcated jousting ring, his lance held at a high angle while the fallen knight's men ran to help him. He knew what people said of him, the names that had begun to echo about him in recent years. He was known as Rhys the Ruthless, and Rhys the Wrath, and sometimes as Rhys the Enraged. It was because he fought not merely to win, but to crush his foe, to vanquish him, to annihilate him. Whether in the practice yard, at sanctioned tournaments and unsanctioned ones, or on the field of battle, his purpose remained ever the same. It was always Englishmen he faced, and Englishmen he despised. So he fought them wherever he found them, and in England there were an infinite number of them willing to test their mettle against an upstart Welshman, a knight errant, eager to sell his battle prowess to the highest bidder. Along the way, he'd become wealthy beyond his wildest childhood imaginings. But it was still not enough. Not for what he had planned. <laughs>